Hello and good afternoon. Welcome to God's Good Grief Ministry. We are having our support group meeting today. Uh, this ministry is a ministry where we are normalizing the discussion around grief as it pertains to um, experiencing the loss of a loved one by death. Uh, we want to have this discussion so that uh, we can start um, healing and 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 uh, growing through our grief, where we are uh, using tools that we learn through the meetings, through therapy, and, and other helps, so that um, we know what to do when we have our triggers and things. Uh, that we're not leaning on coping or un unhealthy coping, excuse me, mechanisms. Today we are discussing time heals all wounds. We have heard this phrase before, um, but maybe we don't really know what it means. So the question is on the table. Time heals all wounds, is that true? Um, what is your, the question is, what do you think of this phrase? Um, and do you personally have any facts that time heals all wounds? In any of your experiences, do you have uh, any facts that time has healed all wounds? Please feel free to unmute yourself to share. Don't be shy, this is a discussion. It's so not just me speaking, it's all of us. Amen. Amen. You know, Crystal, I never thought about that um, in a deep way. And I have had, this is not, my mother's death is not the first loss, but maybe it has been my greatest. And now that you, you have asked this question, I'm really thinking about it because I know that, I believe that over time, I would not, I would not feel that deep sorrow that my mother has passed. Like, like I do now because it's kind of recent. But I don't know that that total healing is going to happen right before until oh, Jesus yeah. comes. I really don't think that that healing, that time heals will, will happen until, because I have the hope that my mother, I will see my mother again. I think that that will be the healing for me when that time comes. Amen. Thank you for sharing, Sister Henry. Welcome, Sister Greg and Sister Roylette. Um, The question is on the table. Um, what do you think when you hear the phrase, time heals all wounds? And do you personally, um, in your experiences, have any facts that time heals all wounds? Feel free to unmute yourself to share. I want to talk, but it's so noisy. Um, I don't know if y'all hear all the noise. I'm gonna try to talk quick. <laughs> um, yeah, I used to, I used to believe that, but lately, I don't know so much. And maybe it does heal all wounds. Time, I think God heals all wounds. But um, yeah, I, I'm, I, yeah, I'm a little, little not so much with that as I used to be. Um, like I said, God heals all wounds. And sometimes those wounds take a really long time to heal. Um, I know we talked before about there being a scab, and sometimes that scab can feel like it's being pulled off. Um, so I just want to say that real quick. There's one I want to say, but it's just too noisy, and I'm trying to keep an air out also for this, um, you know, flight. So thank you. Amen. Thank you, Sister Greg. Okay, for me, um. I'm still trying to figure that out with um, time healing the wounds. Um, because what exactly are you saying about time healing that wound? Are you saying that um, that you're not going to miss that person anymore? Uh, and it's as if that person never lived. Um, then... As as was just mentioned, there is that hope that you will see 
uh, your loved one again because of the life that was there. So uh, that's something that you look forward to. I don't, uh, for me, I don't know if I necessarily subscribe to the time healing as much as I believe that God is the one that does the healing. Amen. Amen. Love it. Thank you, Sister Willard. I'm loving these, this feedback. Anyone else? So I just want to try to get into the phrase, time heals the wound. Is that it? So the phrase is time heals all wounds. And it's all a, wounds. Um, okay. Yeah, it's a common phrase that okay, time people heals say all, all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, so what are your thoughts when you hear that phrase and have you had any, um, have you experienced that personally? You have any facts that time heals all wounds? Um, I guess it gets better, the wound. Um, but I don't know about the healing part. Um, and if I was to apply this for grieving, uh, it's actually been three years exactly last week since my sister passed tomorrow will be the burial since she was buried, September 11th. And it gotten better, but uh, it, you know, it, the wound is, it's still there. It's still there. The wound gets better, but it's still there. So. Amen, thank you for that. And your your sister anniversary is actually on my mom's birthday, which is tomorrow. So I will be definitely keeping you in my prayers, and I pray you keep me in yours. Um, definitely. You know, <laughs> thank you. Um, I've heard this phrase a lot throughout the years. Um, and you, I used to be like, yeah, time to heal all wounds. Um, for me, I've always looked at it, you know, the breakup, you know, like I just need to give it some time and, you know, I'll just be back out there. But um, yeah, just like when you uh, don't address something, you're just layering things on top of it. But eventually you got to come back to that and dig into that. So it doesn't matter how much time has passed, that thing is still there for you to, to address it. Um, you know, the scripture that I was using was um, Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. You know, and we know how it goes to be born, to die, to plant, to pluck up, to kill, to heal, to break down. Um, yes, you have a time in your grief where um, you've got to be in those emotions, right? You're feeling it. It's, and then there's a time when you need to work on it and get the healing you need. But time is not the, the healer. What you do with that time is what is, is what's important. That's what is really going to matter. And so I don't, I don't believe that time heals all wounds. But I do believe that um, what you do with that time um, is what is what is really going to matter. I believe that God is the one that heals all our wounds. You know, He tells us that, you know, in His in His Word. Um, you know, someone was saying, and I think it was Sister Greg who I was talking to. She was saying how, you know. Um, Time is, is just a frame, you know, something that we use um, for seasons and things like that. But healing, healing is an experience um, that you have. So some of the things that I had learned where they were saying that um, time does not change the, the course of your life. Um, time cannot take care of your healing. It's about what you do with that time. Um, and that um, time, it makes us passive. It doesn't make us active in our healing. So we'd be like, oh, with time, I'm going to heal this with time. But you're not, you're not being active in your healing. So time is just passing by. And you're being, you're being passive. You're, you're not healing, um, and because we've depended on time to heal us and not God. 
to heal us. Um, so that's, that's, um, you know, my take on it. Um, I'm trying to just let the spirit lead me to go because I know this is uh, heavy and especially pertaining to grief. Welcome, Sister Dana. We're happy to have you on. Thank you. Um, just because uh, just I don't want to go on to the next thing before I give you a chance, but the question on the floor is, um, what do you think of the phrase, time heals all wounds? And do you personally have any facts that time heals all wounds? So before I go on, I wanted to give you a chance to, to share anything regarding that phrase. I think it's what you do in that time. Um, I don't know that the passage of time itself heals anything. I think it's what you're able to do. Um, maybe the support that you can get or the help that you can get in that time. Um, yeah, just off the top of my head, that's, that's what I think. I'm not sure if that's the right answer or if there is a right answer, but that's just what comes to mind. I think you said what a lot of us just said. Okay. I I was just saying that time doesn't do anything. God does the healing, but you have to be active and that time makes you passive. Um, Sister Greg said the same thing, Sister Orlette, Sister Henry. So mm -hmm. I think we're, we're all on one accord. Okay. Um, that we believe that it's what you do in that time, but it's it's God that does the healing. Amen. Um, that does the healing of your wounds. Um, and we have to remember that emotional healing, this is a process, right? So with emotional healing, um, I learned that there's a, a few steps. There is um, acknowledging. So you have to take the step of acknowledging your grief, your pain, your trauma, your hurt, whatever it is, you have to acknowledge that, right? So maybe you need to sit down and you need to kind of ask yourself, you know, um, what am I experiencing right now? What is the pain that's going on? What is what am I grieving over? What am I hurt from? Um, then you have to allow yourself to feel those emotions. And I know that is very hard. Um, you, you feel it. You feel it as we talked about physical um, grief, the grief in our bodies that we carry around. Um, when we are allowing ourselves to feel our emotions, that's very painful and it's very draining. It's a very tiring process, but um, you do start to experiencing the healing and, and the relief. Um, and then we have to get to the point where we're accepting. We're accepting that we've been through difficult experiences. We're not dismissing it. We're not hiding it. We're not pretending that it didn't happen. We are accepting the fact that I've been through some difficult stuff. Whatever that stuff is, you know, but you are accepting that. That doesn't mean you become that, but you're accepting that this has happened to me. I have experienced this. And then um, self-integration is a term called self-integration. You're taking inventory of all your experiences, right? Whether it's painful or not. And then you're seeing yourself as a whole person, right? And, and when you get to that point, um, and I, it made me think of God, right? When he, sorry, we have some cars dragging up and down the street. Um, it made me think about God when he would uh, touch someone and he would heal them. And he would say, go and sin no more, or your faith has made you whole, right? So now you're seeing yourself as a whole person. And um, someone shared that now you're, you're because you have forgiven yourself. And remember, we talked about that a few months ago, that sometimes we forgive everybody, but we forget to forgive ourselves. Um, but now that you have deeply forgiven yourself, you are um, readily able to to forgive other people, right? And, um, you know, you've gone through the processing of the uh, painful life experiences and the strong emotions. Um, and with that will come out um, empathy, right? And um, you're able to have compassion on yourself. You're able to accept, self-acceptance, you accept um, yourself for who you are. Um, and this is gonna look different for everybody. You know, it's not going to 
be the same what you experience through your healing. It's going to be different for everyone. Um, and it is going to, um, the time frame will be different, right? It may be a shorter or longer process than you expect, but um, you're going to come out better on the other side. When you take the time and you go through um, this healing, the emotional healing that you need to do, you have to do the work. Remember, I always say that we have to do the work. Um, we want that little magical one sometimes or to just blink and, and be healed and the pain gone away, but we've got to put in the work in order to experience, you know, the results of, of healing. Um, I want to remind us that you, and some of the things that came to my mind, actually, when I was uh, trying to prepare um, what to share today was that there's true healing and that there's false healing, right? So we know true healing that comes from God you know, God alone. Um, and with God, I, I believe that everyone can be healed. There's not um, like only a specific group of people that can be healed. Like, oh, because you're you're over five feet, you're allowed to be healed. Or anyone under that, they can't be healed or whatever. Um, and with God, that there is restoration, right? He doesn't just um, heal you from that thing you're suffering from, but that he restores you um, better than what you were before, right? And um, only the way he does it, only credit can be given to him, right? It, to no one else. It can only be given to him. And then um, he brought to my mind, and I don't know why, but maybe I have to share that there's false healing, right? There's, there's always um, a true and a false, right? A substitute. There's always the real thing. Um, and then there's always the, the substitute, just like teachers, right? You got your, your real teacher that you've been with for years, but then when they're out, you get a, a substitute teacher to cover the subjects and all of that. But, um, you know, substitutes and those usually come from outside of God. And the things that were brought to my mind was things like when we are, um, depending on these quick um, healing things, you may see the ads sometime on YouTube, like you don't need to exercise, do this one thing every night for three weeks and you will have total health and healing. You will see your body weight drop. You'll see your cholesterol. You know, you see advertisements like that, right? Giving you that quick, you know, healing for little to no money and little to no time and little to, you know, any effort at all, no effort at all. Um, you have things like, and I'm not trying to fit anyone, but we have things like we go to do some magical things and some witchcraft things and crystals and potions. And we depend on superstitions and things like that. Um, unhealthy coping. Um, I also, uh, was thinking about, um, you know, I, uh, come into contact with, with people when I would do street ministry. And they would talk about the instance in the Bible. I think it was an Acts, that one experience with the, the cloth. And, and people uh, say, all I need is uh, a cloth, right? And so they purchased this cloth from, again, one of the promotions on the, the TV ads. Um, you get this holy cloth and you do this and you will be healed. But we have to see that that is only God who does the healing. And that instance in the Bible, that was for um, that moment. That was for a specific reason. That wasn't to depend on some uh, object or thing like that. That was to, you know, everything to point us back um, to God. And God is the one who does, who is the ultimate, ultimate um, healer. Um, in our journey um to to healing um yes it's going to to take time right there we can't rush um through this um i know for me with my grief journey it wasn't just um the grief of losing my mom and my brother and my stepdad and my dad um it was also um, trying to unpack other things that I didn't deal with throughout, um, you know, in my life. 
you know, through my childhood, my teenage years and so forth. So all of that um, came with the grief. And so that's um, all the other stuff um, in, in that wound. And that's why when I was saying when we're going on this emotional healing, you have to dig deep. You got to get in there because it's not just stuff that's on the surface, things all the way underneath. Um, this nurse was taught, this young girl was uh, talking and she was sharing how she's a nurse and she had to, um, in her training, she had to link up with a uh, wound, a nurse who does wound care. And so they had this patient who had a hole in her leg. And so they really had to kind of dig in and pull out, you know, uh, things, tissues and, you know, things that started to kind of come up on there. So they had to clean it out really good um, so that they can uh, properly, you know, patch her up and the wound can continue to, to heal. Well, the as they were cleaning it, the patient was doing a lot of squirming or wincing to the, she was just like, stop, stop, it's hurting no more. You may feel like that in your emotional healing, but keep going. Just like the nurses had to tell her, if we stop and don't do this, it's going to be more painful because you're open and you're going to get an infection. And then you're really going to have um, more problems, right? It's going to become a chronic issue now. So when we don't deal with our emotional healing, when we stop at the part where it gets um, painful, right? It's getting too deep and it's getting too painful. When we stop, now we're going to move, we're going to keep going on with life and it's going to get chronic. And like I said, when we don't deal with our emotionals, the emotional um, aspect is going to start showing up in our physical being. It's going to get worse. It's not going to get better because you threw it to the side, right? It's going to get worse. Um, so make sure that in that digging and that painfulness, just just keep on going. This is essential to your health, to your safety, to avoid any more um, trauma being added to it, right? Um, because we want our wounds to, to be healed, but we have to address those wounds. We have to be active, right? And being letting time try to heal us just cripples us and leaves us passive, not active. So um, get active with your wound care. Before I move forward, anything anyone wants to share, please unmute yourself. I want to hear from yes. you. Yes, Chris, um, you've got some really, really great points. Um, the question is like identifying the wounds, first of all, you know, how do you know uh, if there are any other wounds besides the grief, besides, you know, whatever grief that you're facing? How can, how do you realize, like, how do you come into that realization that you have other wounds there? You know, um, do, would you suggest therapy or let's say if the person doesn't want to go to therapy? <laughs> um, because I know somebody right now who's, who's going through this. That's why I'm bringing this out. Okay. Um, so can I can I say something real quick yes. to that? Because sure. I I was over here just agreeing with what you were saying, Crystal, and saying I know what you're talking about because mm -hmm. I have been dealing with that. Like there are things that have been coming up that. I thought I had dealt with, but because of dealing with grief, I'm realizing that I'm going way back. The mm. thing that I put to the side and said, okay, that, that's been put away. And I realized I need to deal with that and not leave it there. And one of the things I would say that has been helping me is, you know, just being in prayer and um, pleading before God and saying, God, just help me to deal with this situation uh, of grief. And he's been leading me in, into some paths 
And mm. I'm like, Lord, where are you taking me to? And so I have situations where people come into my life that's dealing with brokenness. And in talking to them, it brings up things from my past. And also for me, there, there may be moments, uh, it may be a happy moment, but then it brings up something that I need to deal with. So for me, it's not a set thing, but there are different things that cause me to really look at certain things and say, hey, look, I need to deal with that in order for me to really move forward. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Sister Orla. That's powerful. And that's all I want you guys to share because I'm like, you know, you may already be in this and got some, you know, experiences. Um, and like you said, Sister Naomi, you know, the person doesn't want to, to go to therapy. Confide in somebody, right? Because they're, you know, like Sister Orla just said, um, the things that she put aside, that, that automatically triggered my mind you put it aside and time didn't even deal with that. It didn't do it for you. It didn't heal it for you. And you had to go back to that thing and, and start um, dealing with it, start getting active um, with your healing through that. And so you have to confide in someone. If they don't want to go to therapy, go to some kind of um, group that deals with that particular issue. There is a, um, a church here. It's in... I believe it's Lexington, Mass. And I remember me and my friends used to go to that church every, I believe it was Monday night. They had uh, recovery groups. And depending on what you needed recovery from, they had different rooms that you would be sent to. And um, I remember we used to meet up after work and we were excited about, we are like, we're gonna go get healing, we're recovering, you know, from our issues, our traumas and everything. So, okay, you may not want um, a therapist or may, some people like I can't afford one. There are uh, free recovery groups, there are support groups. Don't put your healing on hold because the more time pass, the harder it is going to be to deal with it. And when you find yourself always irritated and anxious and angry when certain things are, are brought up, um, I'm telling you that that's that stuff that you, you need to start unpacking. Watch yourself, you know, and even ask friends and stuff to point things out to you. Um, I know uh, someone was saying, when you want to know uh, what, what you know how it says how a man speaks, so is he, what's really inside you? They said, take your a recorder and record what you say throughout the day. And at the end of the day, play that back and see what has come out of your mouth. That's what's inside of you. The conversations and things you've held, the responses and things that you, things you reacted to or responded to, right? You, we have to, um, you know, someone was just saying yesterday after service how maybe they're not coming to, to the grief support group because, you know, they're too busy. They don't have time. We should never be too busy for our healing. Because let me tell you something, the minute that you have that breakdown or whatever, Listen, that job or whatever you've been committed to, you are you're dismissed and you are replaced. So remember, you are important, you are a priority, and your emotional, mental, physical, spiritual health is top priority. You have to deal with it. If if this pandemic, pandemonium, whatever they call it, it didn't teach us anything. Uh, while we had the time to really sit and see ourselves. When we've come out of that, I've seen more people who are mentally unstable and we don't need to add to that. Let us deal with our stuff right now. While we have the tools, we've got the time, we've got the support network, deal with our stuff. There's no excuse. There's no excuse to make up why we we can't. The the you know what? Maybe I need to go into this segment right now. Before healing, before we're gonna say, I'm going, I'm I want to get healed, I'm I want to do this. 
If you have a P, I'm gonna give you two minutes to get a piece of paper because I want you to write these questions down. And, and if it's not for yourself, write it down for somebody else. I'm gonna give you two minutes to grab a paper and pen. And just let me know when you're ready. Just say amen when you're ready. Amen. Because now I'm here to speak it. All right. All right. Question number one. Before your healing, ask yourself, are you ready to be healed? That's the first question. Are you ready to be healed? Because that question right there is going to lead you to, you know, your healing, the next questions and being able to progress. Second question. What are you healing from? What are you healing from? And so um, this is where you have to sit down and you have to um, take the inventory. What am I healing from? Am I healing from grief? Am I healing from a divorce, a breakup, uh, whatever it may be, but you have to sit down and you have to ask yourself, pray about it. God, reveal to me, what, what do I need healing from? Because now you know that you're ready to be healed and you know you need the healing, but what do you need to be healed from? So that's your second question to ask yourself. Third, are you willing to sit through some discomfort in service of healing? Because like we just said, and like Sister Roylette shared her personal experience, it's going to be uncomfortable. It is going to hurt. So are you willing to sit through some discomfort in service of healing? That's the third question you need to ask yourself. I'm just giving you a minute to write that down. All right. Can you repeat the last part of it, please? Oh, sure. After discomfort. Uh-huh. Are you, are you willing to sit through some discomfort in service of healing? All right, fourth question. How is not healing affecting or serving your life? How is not healing affecting or serving your life? How how is that impacting you? How's that working out for you? Not healing. That's your fourth question. All right, number five. Last part again. Say that last part again. Oh, sure. How is not healing affecting or serving your life? All right, number five, what would help you and what can you do to help your emotional healing journey to be, excuse me, what would help you and what can you do to help your emotional healing journey to be gentle on yourself? So what will help you? Sorry, can you repeat and sure. what can you do to help? Let me do it. Let me do it. So what can you can't hear you. Uh-huh. Can you hear me, sister? Okay, what will help you to help your emotional healing journey? That's the first part. What will help you in your emotional healing journey? And the second part is what can you do to um, make the journey gentle on yourself? What can you do to make the journey gentle on yourself? So that'll be two parts for that one.
And the last question, if you're ready, is what do you want your life to look like after you've healed? What do you want your life to look like after you've healed? So before you go into your healing, ask yourself these questions. And then proceed as you're led by the Holy Spirit. All right. Is there um, anything else on your heart, your mind, before I wrap up? Uh, last few things. Anything anyone want to share? Please feel free to unmute yourself. So, based on these questions, um, are you like the first one? Are you ready to be healed? Mm -hmm. So, is a, is it okay that a person does not want to be healed? um on this journey um is it okay to just continue on um with say you know this is my new norm mm -hmm. dealing with grief and not to seek healing it it is um their choice to not want to be healed um but they have to accept what comes with that. That is just going to just be heavier to carry. And like we just said, time will go on, but there's there's no no transformation. There's no forward movement, you know, in life. Like you're just, you're content to just not be healed. We pray that people would choose you know, to want to be healed. But again, that's their choice to choose not want to be healed as well. And why they don't want to be healed, um, I don't know. That's something that they will have to ask themselves. Um, I know like someone had shared that um, they were afraid that that would mean that they would have to um, like let go of memories and stuff of their loved one. And that means like, well, then you're not really um, grieving them if if you're um, healing and moving forward. And it's, uh, what did someone say to me? They said, even though my mom been gone all these years and I have a picture of her in my house and I can see her, it's like she's no longer tangible anymore. And so she's become a memory. I have memories of her as I'm moving forward. Um, in life. And it's not that they don't love her or don't remember her because they have memories of her. It's just, she's not physically there anymore. So it's not going to benefit them to stay in a space where they would rather she be physically alive, where they just taunt themselves because they want her to be physically tangible. It's not that, but I have memories of her and you know, our relationship that we we had, we built memories. And so I can look at pictures and um, I can remember the things that she taught me and so forth. But um, they know that they've had to move forward, right? And so they've had to kind of go through some healing so that they do move forward. And so you can um, heal and not lose the memory and love that you have for your um, loved one that passed. Just because you're healed doesn't mean that's going to erase the memories and, and the love in your heart that you've had. That just means that you, um, you're you dealing with these the painful emotions, the anger, the sadness, the frustration, and you know all these things that um, you're experiencing as you grieve, um, that's what you're, you're, you're dealing with and you're unpacking and you're releasing, um, but your memories you can you can continue to to hold on to um so it, it's someone's choice if they want to heal or not yes um the 
But here is something that I noticed, especially with my children. Like I noticed there are certain things about them, each one of them that they do, that it reminds me of how their dad was. Mm -hmm. So um, would you call that a memory as, would you say that's just a memory? Or is that, um, you know, something that was passed on to them? And even with, um, you know, the loss of parents, sometimes you, um, you'd find that um, there are certain things that you do that would, you know, you, you respond to it the way that one of your parents responded to it. And then you, you it's an aha moment where you realize, well, is that something that was passed on that it's not just a memory, but it's more than a memory that is carried on? Uh, I'm mm -hmm. just asking that. Yeah, no, I know what you're saying because, you know, these things that I do or say, and, you know, my sisters always tell me, the way that you did that, or your facial expression is just like mom, just like mom. And I think it's just... um traits and stuff that you you have of your parents you know so how you're seeing like things like your kids did like their dad is just you know traits that they probably have of their dad you know because we're a part of our parents or a reflection of them so I think it's just something that is just just natural um and it reminds you of of him you know like even how um you know I may respond to something like you know my sister said well she was like you do the face or like the hand gesture exactly like her like she was like that's just so crazy it's just so scary so I think it's just you know traits that that we have of them and it just you know reminds us of our of our loved ones just brings up the memory of them that's just how I, I think I could be wrong um, but as you were just saying that that's what it made me think of and how you know, me, I feel like me and my siblings are seeing it more. Whereas like when my mom was alive, we was, or my brother, we would see, you know, them you know, do certain things, but we're like, we didn't realize how much um, we do the exact same things or we respond to things the same way, you know, that they did. <laughs> Oh, well, Sister Grace says she she too think it is traits. Yeah. And and that's the thing, you know, when that's what I like when people be like, oh, just um, you gotta just get over it. They don't understand that there was a connection there, a bond, right? Like I always say a womb connection when a when a woman is, is carrying a baby, you know, there's that connection, that child's a part of you. There's things that you know, they take from you and as they're growing up and, you know, you see, and sometimes that's why our parents got frustrated with us because maybe they seen in us things that they did when they were younger and just like, oh, it's like, yep, I'm a reflection of you. I got your traits. So I, I don't know, Sister Ray, like that's just how I'm thinking that is is traits, you know, that we have the same. <laughs> I hope that helps. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not an expert. We just all learning here. Anyone Thank else? Mm -hmm. I have a scenario, um, and I I I don't want to get off the topic, but I hope I hope I'm staying on the topic. Okay, so my sister passed, and um, and I feel like I have moved a step forward mm. towards healing however I spoke to my brother-in-law you know uh last last week and we haven't really been keeping in touch since my sister passed but he'll he'll call like he called last week and I knew why he called because it was my sister's anniversaries the death of the anniversary but I returned his call later a couple days later but I feel like the way he's responding to me because I took, because we have kind of like took one step through healing. It's like, he hasn't, he hasn't at all um, 
he's still in that phase one but it's like he makes us feel bad because we're going through that positive direction it's almost as if he makes us feel like how could you mm. be in that mode when you know when when i'm still i'm grieving over my your your sister my wife you know what i mean mm. it's like how do you like how do you make that person under, i don't know how to make him understand that it's not I'm still grieving over my sisters because yeah. I've taken one step forward. That doesn't mean that I don't care or love her mm. at all. I'm st I'm still grieving in a way. It's just that I'm healing. Yeah. Can and I it, add to that? Mm -hmm. yeah, yes. yes. One. <laughs> because, um, I I think I can identify with what he's feeling. He sees you guys as that connection to his late wife. And that's why he feels the way that he does. And with you guys making that transition and trying to move forward, he's feeling like, you know, um, he's losing that grip more or less. Oh, not grip, but he's losing that, that, that support that he needs to have to still feel connected to who she was. And that's why he's doing that. So as you were sharing that, I said, okay, I get it. I can understand because um, when my husband died, I expected, you know, my in-laws would have been there like um, with me with the grief process and they were like, no, you need to move forward. You have your kids to think about. So don't even try to look over here. We'll deal with our grief our own way. So that was a rude awakening for me because I was looking at this and hey, look, uh, here is somebody that I can be connected with because this is his family, you know, especially for the children's side of it, that that's a connection that they would have had. So that's why he's feeling that way. And uh, what basically what you can try to do is just pray and ask God for guidance in how to deal with it. Pray for him, you know, with him working through this process. But I totally get why he's feeling that way. Man, thank you for that, Sister Orla. That you. just really made me think about... Um, when my brother was killed and his his fiance, you know, after a while, um, we I, we were kind of like, well, we hope she don't feel like she owes us anything. You know what I mean? Like she can move on with her life because we didn't understand like why it was such a, you know, yes, we love her. Don't wonderful woman and everything. But we were like, well, she doesn't owe us anything. You know, so she can she can go ahead and move forward, you know, as we're working through to move forward. But as you just explained that, Sister Orlette, I'm like, okay, I get it now. You know, she she still, you know, needed us, you know, and so that's why, you know, I also was, you know, just keeping contact with her because I know that even though he was our brother, our sibling, he had this life with this woman and they were going to start this new chapter and getting married you know and now that's not happening it's so how does that impact her and how does she move forward so thank you for just so beautifully sharing that that just made it so clear to me thank you because i and you know like i said you know yes we all grieve but then there's different aspects of um types of grief that i don't understand you know, like if someone's married and then they lose a spouse and there's, there's those aspects I don't understand. So it's, it's good when someone who has experienced that can share and give us that kind of insight. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Yes. May, may I just may I just add something too? Yes, please. Um, because I was listening to Sister Naomi and I think about uh, my own case with my mom and with my dad. You know, um, people would ask me, a lot of people would ask me, how is dad doing? And I said, dad is doing well. 
that is doing wrong. Because as Christians, we don't we don't mourn or grieve like those who don't have no hope. Mm -hmm. The Bible is true. And it is really, really true. Even That's yesterday funny. I was talking to someone about my my um it was what about my mom and something came up and I said, you know, like I have this hope. And I might have mentioned this to you, Christine, in our conversation this morning as we go biking. Mm -hmm. That because I have this hope, I don't I'm not carrying that burden, the burden of this loss. Because I believe if I remain faithful, I believe that my mom was faithful. She mm. was a faithful follower of Christ. And I believe that I'm going to see her again as long as I remain faithful. And and so, Sister Naomi, um, I don't know what the situation was with your sister or with um, the, um your brother-in-law as it relates to Christ. But, you know, as you try to talk to him, and I feel like you, what you can do is, is try to connect more often but let him know why it appears as if your family is moving on because you guys have the hope. Mm -hmm. You know, you have this hope that, you know, you can't just live in this with this grief and, you know, let it or let it overpower you or succumb to it. But because you know the Lord and you know what he has said in his word and you believe it, that you you cannot continue to, you know, to grieve in that way. You know, but it's not that you don't miss your sister. And it's not that you won't feel the loss. There are times when my like as you guys know, my mother passed away Father's Father's Day this year, right? And there are times when I think about her. One day I was at work and I missed my mother so much. Even though I'm living in another country, I'm not close to her, but you know, I would go home and I would see her. I would talk to her and stuff like that. And even as she became sick with dementia, I would, you know, I would be able to see video of videos of her. And I saw her twice this year before she passed, you know, but still, you know, it's, 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 it's just God that can help us with this, the, the a widow or loss is only God that can help us. So we have to just, you know, try to help others by letting them know what we believe in the word of God and help them to understand that it's not that we don't care about them and you know but we wish they would get to the point where they too would know that you know we've been made dear for a night but joy comes in the morning one day God is Jesus is going to come and he's going to do away with all of this but um but let's try and connect some more sister Naomi I know you have school and no one things like that but you know see if you can talk to him but yeah i think the ultimate is thank that you so much sis. As, that's very helpful you're welcome yeah but as as children of god we don't we don't mourn we don't we don't continue to grieve like we don't have a hope there's hope in jesus yeah and it, it sounds like he's you know comparing <laughs> the grief and you know everybody grieves differently right and it sounds like you all chose to um to go through healing um, sometimes people just delay their, their healing and their grief. They, they don't want to face it. They don't want to deal with it. Um, like we had shared um, a while back, you know, they throw themselves into work and, and everything else. Um, and that's fine if you're not ready to deal with it, but just when you are, it's, it's going to be a lot because, you know, now that's, has compacted, you know, and so. It's going to be a floodgate, but um, there's no comparison and, and there's no timeline when you need to, uh, you know, hurry up and wrap it up. You know, this isn't a race, right? Um, and we, I know we like to do that. Now we've talked about when you're in complicated grief, right? When those emotions, you know, um, what do they say? Like six months to a year have intensified. Right, they haven't subsided. Not saying your grief is over. When the emotions that come with the grief, when those have only kept intensifying, you really, really need to to seek um, help because you know I always remind us that we don't want our uh, emotions to take us over, right? So that's why we have to deal with it and, and put in the work and choose um, healing. You know, so we. We're gonna pray for him before we close out. Um, but yeah, just just encourage him and 
you know, like Sister Mary said, just checking in a little bit more often. I don't know if he has, you know, other family that he can talk to or be encouraged, but um, just be there with him when you can and, and you know, answer his calls or texts when, when you can. I just want to say something. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. I think, I know for me, um, the hardest part of the grief is those moments of sadness. You know, we miss them. That's a sad part, missing them. But I think it's the the sadness that overcomes us. And sometimes it, it actually does overcome us to the point where it's just overwhelming. And some people can't get past that. And I think that's what, you know, holds them back in the, in the grief um, aspect. I think it's that sadness that, I don't know if I'm making sense, but I know for me, I go through the moments of sadness, but they don't overwhelm me. They come and they go. And I thank God for that. You know, he, he brings me through them. And so I think that's what plays a, a lot on a lot of people that are, are taking it so hard because of that, that sadness. That sadness can be so heavy sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that's what might be going on with him. You can't, you know, that sadness has just got him right now, you know. But, yeah, I think um, reaching out more, and, you know, and just because you said, I think you said you don't hear from him that much, Naomi. Maybe you guys can reach out a little more and keep in touch with him, you know, maybe just try to encourage him the best you can. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Thank you, guys. That's, that's great advice. Thank you. Amen. See, we all got something to share in our grief experience that could help. <laughs> Amen. So I just want to wrap up uh, reminding us that God is our ultimate healer, right? So Malachi 4.2 tells us, but unto you that fear my name, shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. Um, Deuteronomy 32, 39, see now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. Um, I kill and I make alive, I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Psalms 103, verse three, who forgiveth thine iniquities and healeth all thy diseases. Psalms 107, verse 20, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Um, Jeremiah 33, 6, behold, I will bring it health and cure. I will cure them and will reveal unto them abundance of peace and truth. Psalms 147, verse 3. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. And I was just thinking about how we started with, um, you know, time heals all wounds. Well, we just read this scripture that God healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. So it is God who does the healing. That's the answer to our question and not time, but it is important what we do with that time. Amen. Um, so we are going to close out. Oh, there's one more thing I wanted to um, to read. And um, it's from Education, page 113. God's healing power runs all through nature. If a tree is cut, if a human being is wounded or breaks a bone, nature begins at once to repair the injury. Even before the need exists, the healing agencies are in readiness. And as soon as a part is wounded, every energy is bent to the work of restoration. God has already made us in such a way that when we have the, the uh, physical injuries that, you know, he, um, things are already set to begin to repair that injury. And he is the one who who will heal our brokenhearted, our emotional um, injuries, and he will bind up our wounds so that we can be healed emotionally. Um, I know that death is hard and losing a loved one by death is hard. It is 
that sting that is talked about in 1 Corinthians 15, 55. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is that victory, thy victory? And we can say that through the power of Jesus and what he's done on the cross of Calvary, that death will no more have a sting and a grave will no more have a victory. To those of us, like Sister Henry said, who believe in God, who have this hope that burns in our hearts in the coming of the Lord, that we will be reunited with our loved ones again when he comes. I encourage you to be faithful, and I encourage you to um, do not put off the healing, uh, the emotional healing that you are in need of. Failure to do this and take care of that wound only allows it to become toxic and is detrimental to your health and safety. You've got to be active um, and we cannot wait on time. We've got to be active and know that God walks with us and he will lead us um, and guide us and he will heal us. So with that, we are going to um, close out in prayer if there's no more um, thoughts or comments. If all hearts and minds are clear, we will close out in prayer. Please, I want to thank you as usual, Crystal, for um, a wonderful session. And thank everyone for their comments. And just glad that we can be here together to help one another. I uh, Also, I'm asking for you to please keep me in prayer. I'm still in the airport and I haven't had any updates. I really want to get out of here. <laughs> I want to get mm -hmm. home. So please pray for me that yeah. I'll get some news soon. I can be on my way home. Get safely home. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. We sure will be praying. Amen. I too join with Sister Greg to say that I am um, I'm grateful for this, um, Chris. Uh, I've not been here, but like I said this morning, I wanted to come on. You know, so this is kind of hard for me but um I'm, th I'm thankful that I was able to come on today and I I am I am so blessed amen. so blessed by the session I really enjoyed it amen thank you so much and we really enjoyed all your feedback and encouragement it's very welcomed thank you I want to say thank you because I really enjoyed um, the session too a lot of things that have been happening and I'm like Lord what is going on here and as you were sharing I was like ah that's <laughs> what it is <laughs> so thank you so much amen you're welcome thank you for, for you know just sharing you know your heart with us and we continue that God will help to continue on, on this journey and thank you for the aha connection <laughs> Amen. All right, let us uh, pray out. Uh, let us pray. Father God in heaven, thank you so much uh, for this meeting today. Lord, you know that I had no idea what the topic was going to be. I was struggling, but you are always a one time God, and you gave just what we needed to hear. I thank you, Lord God, for um, the sharing, Lord, of personal experiences. We thank you for the aha moment, Lord, for Sister Roylette making that connection. And may we all have um, those aha moments as we look through our emotional healing. And when it gets really hard and it hurts and we want to give up, Lord, remind us of why we're going through this um, and that we will come up with the other side of Jesus. Not just here on earth, um, come out and, and be better, but Lord, in glory, and we will have to experience this kind of pain, and we will have to experience death because you have won the victory. So please, please help us to be faithful. Lord, we live for you, Sister Naomi's uh, brother, Lord. Um, he is grieving, his heart hurts, and he doesn't um, understand, Lord God, how they can just, you know, move forward. And he feels like maybe it's a betrayal, but Lord, give him peace and let him know it's not that. And that everyone um, is is at a, a different, um, you know, stage in, in their healing. Um, some may be a little, you know, 
further because they're choosing and they're, they're working and then some they're just, you know, where they are right now. So he is not forgotten and he's not abandoned and he is still loved and he is still family. Lord, and I pray that you use Sister Naomi and her family to encourage his heart and, and um, when he calls to answer his calls and his texts and to reach out to him a little more often, Lord, and to pray with him and to pray for him, Lord, and to re uh, remind him of your word. Lord, let the scriptures be a healing balm to his soul um, at this time and to all of us. We remember Sister Naomi, her family, as the anniversary of her sister's death is coming up, and as my, my mom and her twin's birthday is tomorrow, and I'll be checking in on my aunt just to make sure she's okay. Um, sometimes people can tell you certain things over text, but you just sometimes need to hear their voice and just let them know that they're loved and they're not forgotten. So we thank you that we don't walk alone in this great journey that you walk beside us. And in those hard times, you carry it. So we want to say thank you for being an close and personal God. And Lord, I want to pray for Sister Craig. Um, she has been delayed several times at the airport. We're asking in the name of Jesus that she will get a text alert. Lord, even while we are speaking, you said that you will answer. We pray that you will give her a text alert that she needs to be at her gate to board because she is going home, Lord God. And we pray that you will be the pilot and we pray that you will carry her back to New York safely. Um, and we pray that she will be able to settle in and, and to rest. And I pray a wonderful uh, new week for all of us uh, as, as we get back to work and school and the daily toils of life. But I pray that your Holy Spirit will bring to our remembrance, Lord God, your word and uh, keep our hearts in, encouraged. Uh, thank you for everyone who was able to join us today. And those who weren't able to, we pray that they will be blessed when the video goes up on YouTube. As they watch the replay, we pray your Holy Spirit will speak to them and encourage them and help them to get active. Um, with a healing because you want to make us whole. Then we thank you that you are the ultimate healer. We ask these mercies, we pray these mercies, we believe them by faith in the holy and mighty name of Jesus. We do ask and pray all these things in his name. Amen and amen. 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 Good night, everyone. everyone. God amen. bless. Have a good, good one. evening. You too. Thank you. God bless you all. Good night. Good night. Thanks for coming. Thank you for inviting me, Crystal. You're welcome. We're always happy to have you, Ms. Diva. Thank, Thank you, you for joining us. <laughs> God bless you. God bless everyone. Thank you.